Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Zdenek's English podcast. My name is Zdenek, and if this is your first time listening, then welcome to this podcast, which is uh, aimed at English learners all around the world, anyone who is basically uh, in need of practicing uh, their English and developing their listening skills. This is the podcast for you. And I've been running this podcast for I don't know exactly how long, but I think it has been more than 11 years now. So I should know what I'm doing. I happen to be an English teacher uh, from the Czech Republic, and um, I am well qualified to do this job as well. I've got a master's degree and um, the certificate CELTA and DELTA apart from module three, but nobody has to talk about that. Anyway, I've recently been to Vietnam. In fact, I've just come back from there, and that is why I would like to uh, record this episode, because I think uh, it's a nice opportunity for me to sort of reflect on the experience. I actually lived there for one and a half years, which is a long time, isn't it? So I might as well talk about this a bit. I have got about 45 minutes for it, so it's not much, and... Uh, I don't want to miss anything. So without further ado, let's get started. By the way, you can find this podcast on Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Just type in Zdenek's English Podcast. Zdenek is my name. It's spelled Z-D-E-N-E-K. Then you need the apostrophe S English Podcast. And um, you can also uh, watch this on YouTube. That's because I'm also recording it as a video. So just so that I kill two birds with one stone, not literally. No animals are actually harmed during the process. Anyway, I have told you that uh, I've just come back from Vietnam and it is, this is true. And you might be wondering, why is Denek? Why didn't you stay there? Uh, you should have stayed there. What are you doing here? <laughs> I don't know if that's what you're thinking, but I am here, okay? And there are a few reasons for it. Uh, first of all, um, I was working there for a language school, as they call it in Vietnam, English Center. And my contract um, came to an end, and I decided not to extend it. And um, that is why, um, you know, my visa was also expiring. I decided to honor the contract till the end, And then I was like, mm, yeah, that, that will be it for this school. Uh, my overall experience working for them was okay. Yeah, I can tell you more later, but for now, that's what we will leave it at. And I have to tell you um, that uh, some other reason, there were some other reasons for me um, for what, wanting to go back to Czechia, as they call it now. That's right, Czechia or the Czech Republic. That is the country I'm from. Uh, I'm Czech. My nationality is Czech. And it is in Central Europe. Now, some people say it's in Eastern Europe, but I prefer saying it's in Central Europe for obvious reasons. Anyway, I have to tell you that uh, the place I lived in was uh, quite hot, especially in summer. It was getting hotter and hotter, warmer and warmer. Honestly, you could not do without AC. What's AC? Athletic club? AC Milan? No, I'm talking about air conditioning. Yes, you can't do it without AC at night. You have to turn it on. During the day, possibly you could use fans, but it's not enough at night, at least in my experience. And um, yeah, in every shop, everywhere you go, pretty much, they have an AC. Um, da Nang is a wonderful place. It's a coastal city. And however, I would say that the best time to be there is between, let's say, December to March. That is the best time. That is the sweet spot. That's because it's not too hot yet. It's bearable. The weather is nice. And uh, it's actually quite mild as well. It's what they actually, um, they're sort of. November, December, January, that's what they call winter there, even though it's not winter at all. But yeah, so the, one of the reasons was that I was kind of looking forward to... 
Hi, my name is Sibyl and I'm from Switzerland. I like the Achievers Chamber because I learn a lot in a fun way. For more information about the Achievers Chamber, go to teachersthenec.com. I was kind of looking forward to cooling myself down a bit here in the Czech Republic. Also, as you would have guessed, you know, this is an opportunity for me to see my good old friends and some family members. And also, I just needed a break, to be honest. You know, it kind of made sense. There's some health-related stuff as well. Something I have to do, some sort of little surgery that I need to have. And I wasn't confident enough to, to have it done to me in Vietnam because I can't speak their language. And yeah, that, let's leave it at that. It's better for me to, to go through all that here. Then another reason, there's loads, right? Loads of reasons, quite a few, I would say. Another reason was that I wanted to fix my sleeping patterns. I have to tell you that for the past few years, I've been a full-on night owl. Honestly, full-on night owl, yeah. And that brings some benefits, especially the benefit is the main benefit is that you can watch the Premier League matches at night. You can also um, deal with uh, your students from Europe or, or if you run, if you happen to run a, a group, a Discord group called the Achievers Chamber, that helps as well if you can stay up at night. And um, various other benefits such as it's cooler at night so you can go for we can actually go for a run in vietnam uh, otherwise it's just way too hot and unbearable it's it cannot do it during the day it's just too much no matter what you do it's just too hot and the humidity is high so the perceived temperature is even higher than it is like it might be around 30 or over 30 but it actually feels like 40 because of the humidity levels right so yes i wanted to fix those sleeping patterns and uh, it, it's true it has helped a bit also you know the fact that i don't really get much sunlight as a night owl you basically wake up at 2 p.m and then it gets dark in vietnam at 6 p.m so you kind of see the daylight only for four hours the question is is that enough i don't think it is you probably you're devoid of that vitamin what, what is it vitamin d is it vitamin D or is it vitamin A? I don't know. But the point is, it doesn't do you any favors. So it is actually quite, um, it is actually quite um, a good idea to to see some sunshine, you know, and experience that a bit. Um, then, you know, whenever I was with a girl there, also it was hard for me to synchronize our sort of schedule as well. You know, you know, the girl would go to bed. Uh, six hours before me, which is weird, but that's what happened. That's what happened, right? And uh, yeah, um, can't complain. This is this was my choice. I can't complain too much. It was my decision to do it like that. You can blame COVID for it a little bit as well. When that's when it got worse, it became my sort of habit. And uh, Bob's your uncle, you know. Then before you know it, um, then you sort of end up having these weird sleeping patterns. So I would go to bed at 6 a.m. every day for the past uh, year. And is that ideal? Probably not, right? So another reason to go back, you know, to fix that. And um, it's much better now. I go to bed at about 1 a.m. now that I'm back, 2 a.m. maybe. Right, so hopefully uh, you understand that there were a number of reasons for me to go back. And uh, they were all relevant, to be fair. And it simply sort of fell into place. Everything fell into place. It was just what was meant to happen, you know. And it happened. I'm here. I'm back. Yeah. And uh, you might be asking, Zenek, so what was it like? Now that you're back, can you sort of reflect on the experience? I, I certainly can. That's actually what I prepared to talk about here. And also, I will tell you how it feels to be back. And what my possible next moves, mo what my possible next moves will be. All right. So um, yeah, uh, without without any sort of uh, holding back, I have to say that it was one of the best. 
<laughs> honestly, uh, I'm a bit rusty when it comes to talking. At least it looks like that. I wanted to say that it was one of the best decisions in my life, actually, to go there. Because I, I didn't know what I was getting myself into, to be fair. You never do, right? And until you do it, especially if it's something like this. It's like an exotic destination from someone in Europe. And you really don't know. You really have no idea, right? Before you actually experience it. You can watch plenty of videos, but this, this doesn't compare to the actual real experience. So, yeah, I have to say, great, great stuff. And the proof, how, how do I know this? Well, the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. I will tell you the, all, the, all the good stuff. Um, yeah, and also, the, all, honestly, time flew. Time flew by. Like um, As they say, time flies when you're having fun. And the one and a half years I spent there, it, it's almost like it didn't happen or something. No, yeah, I have to say, not everything worked out, don't get me wrong, but the overall, the experience was great. I, I can't complain. My social life was good. I met a lot of very interesting people, made a couple of nice friends, including some girls, yeah. So I have to say that that's the dating life has been good as well, you know. So I did enjoy my time there. And uh, of course, I made some mistakes as well. Some bad moments happened too. Uh, sometimes I lost it like in terms of my sort of patience with some stuff and, and so on. Sometimes things happened that were out of my... Um, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't really do anything about that. Yeah, I could, It just happened to me. Some things happened to me there. Couldn't, couldn't really influence that. But, you know, it's part of the, the experience of living your life, I suppose, especially if you're so far away. But again, like on the whole, the good stuff, I would, I would go as far as to say far outweighed the bad stuff. Yeah, the good stuff was um, proportionally um, more impactful or sort of there was more of it compared to the bad stuff. Yeah, and um, yeah, I got fitter. I lost some weight. Actually, when I came to Vietnam, I weighed about 91, 92 kilos, which had been my record ever. So um, that was a positive. I lost weight. I really started to feel fitter, much fitter. I was in a decent shape. I still am, I think, actually. And um, yeah, so um, the diet was definitely different. I was eating some of the Vietnamese stuff, but also a lot of vegan um, meals because I was living near a vegan restaurant called Loving Vegan. If you ever happen to be in Da Nang, please visit Loving Vegan. It is a great place. Yeah, and they did not pay for this advert, by the way. Not at all. I actually think 99.9%. Point nine is that? Do you say point twice? Probably not. But ninety nine point nine 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 people don't uh, that are listening to this don't actually live in Da Nang. So there might be some Vietnamese people listening to this, and if that's the case, and you ever happen to uh, step your step your foot uh, onto the uh, city of Da Nang, then please visit Loving Vegan, and um, yeah. Um, what else is there to say? I have to say, I did some sports. I went to the gym there. I did running, swimming. Although, is that swimming really? Probably not. It was just like playing in waves, which were far too large for anyone to be able to swim properly there. So it's more about just like having some fun in the waves, really. You know, playing with the ball. I don't mean the ball down there. No, I mean, I'm talking about the ball, you know, like, Volleyball, tennis ball, what have you. I always love to do that when I'm in water. I like to play with balls. <laughs> that sounds horrible. You know what I mean? The round things that you that you can bounce. I love throwing them with someone. That is always fun. Right. I played some football as well, but that, I have to say, I don't feel as the same person as I used to. So that was more out of nostalgia rather than I, I didn't have any amb ambitions to be fair i just i just wanted to try it just five aside football a little bit you know and 
yeah, and also did some volleyball on the beach, so-called beach volleyball. That was fun. But, you know, part of the issue that I didn't do more sports and mostly all the sports I did was mostly to do with like individual sports. Part of the issue was that I didn't exactly meet their sports sports mates, apart from maybe one guy that we that used to have a dip with me. So he used to go for a, for a swim, let's say, in, in the ocean. Apart from one guy, I don't think most of my friends there are into sports so much. So, you know, that is the main reason that most of the sports I did were individual sports. But the mates I met, they were all about playing games, which is another of my passions. So I honestly can't complain. It's been, it has been a lot of fun. And I hope I hope it's not the last time I see them. Spoiler alert. <laughs> okay, what about traffic? Well, this is infamous, right? The the traffic in Vietnam, a lot of a lot of uh, motorbikes uh, often breaking rules, just driving in a crazy way, especially for for European sort of mind uh, mindset or or it it takes time to get used to this, right? It is a it is a quite a busy place uh, quite a crowded place and the people they drive in a slightly different way uh, but you do get used to it in the end i did not drive i have to say i uh, took the what's called grab which is like a service uh, you pay basically for someone to drive you somewhere on their motorbike and that worked quite well for me it's not very expensive especially if you are in a small uh, town or city like danang where the distances are not too not too long. Um, it doesn't compare to Saigon or Hanoi, not at all, where the distances are much larger. So yeah, um, the traffic, I got used to it. But one thing I kind of regret is the fact that I did not learn how to drive. And that's because I kind of still have that phobia of driving and I'm still not that comfortable. Someone was trying to teach me there how to how to drive a motorbike, and that was fun. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, you know who you are. Uh, thank you for giving me those driving lessons. And I hope you know I can sort of um, follow up when I go back. Spoiler alert: If I go back, when I go back, which one is it, Zdenek? Well, I'll tell you about that more. I'll tell you more about that a bit later. But um, yeah. This is one of my sort of regrets that I didn't learn. Actually, it's not the only one. The, another regret is that I didn't learn Vietnamese. Why? Because I'm lazy, I guess. And because uh, it's hard, the language is hard. And because I wasn't motivated enough. Um, I did learn a few phrases. Like I can say, hello, how are you? And uh, I, I can count from one to 10. And so I can say thank you. And I can say some weird things like rain and and name a few fruits and uh, yeah stuff like that to be fair but it's not you know it's nothing nothing to write home about and i'm not surprised because i just just didn't put my mind to it you know i didn't make enough effort it didn't exactly go the extra mile which is an understatement but again you know who says this is um this is the end of me learning Vietnamese. It might just be the start. Who knows? And apart from the people, I, as I told you, I met all kinds, um, including expats, locals. I made all sorts of relationships. I made some mistakes as well and some bad decisions. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> that would be my allergy because it came back after me coming back to the Czech Republic. Now I have, again, allergy to pollen. It did not happen in Vietnam because I think it's the humidity and just different sort of plants grow there. So my allergy in Vietnam is non-existent. But here in Viet here in the Czech Czechia, it happens every every spring, kind of end of spring, and so that's annoying. Uh, but you know, we all have to deal with it. This is because I went for a run uh, not long ago, and I ran twelve kilometers, and that just you know, you get exposed to a lot of pollen and then it takes its toll on you. I've got some antihistamine, antihis, what's the word? Antihistaminics, anti, anti, you know what I mean. Those pills that you need in order to, to uh, uh, reduce the effects of allergy. Those, those ones, I've got it, I've been taking it, but seems 
it seems like it's not enough. I still sneeze from time to time, especially when I have to talk on the next English podcast, which is the the last place that I would like to sneeze in. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Um, what can, what else can I talk about? The prices, you know, prices are nice in Vietnam. Generally, everything is much cheaper. Not everything. For example, cheese and any di not diary, dairy, any dairy product like yogurt or milk in general it is more expensive actually than in Czech Republic. I guess that's because they have fewer cows, I guess. Also, apples are uh, through the roof, you know, they cost an arm and a leg. Yeah, would you believe that? Not, a, not an actual arm and a, and a leg. You don't actually pay with human organs in Vietnam. No, the currency is the Vietnamese dong. But um, apples are expensive. It's like an exotic fruit. Imagine if you're from Europe, for us, um, mango and uh, dragon fruit, which I had no idea what it was until I, w until I uh, went to Vietnam. Also, passion fruit, one of my favorite. That's, that would be super expensive here, right, in Europe. But in Vietnam, it's extremely cheap because it grows there, you see, but apples don't. That's the whole point, I guess. Uh, it's not rocket science. Right, so, um, yeah, uh, especially the services are cheaper. Like, imagine you go to a hairdresser or, I don't know, have a massage. And this stuff is really much cheaper than here in Europe. Any kind of services you can imagine, including the internet as well. Internet is super cheap. And phone, your mobile phone. I don't know if this is... I think there is some sort of... Um, uh, what do you say? Um... I think this is done by the government, you know. The government uh, uh, supports uh, people in this, in this, and they everybody has a cheap phone. I mean, when I say phone, I mean the operator, right? So, like um, the the company that allows you to make phone calls and have internet in your phone, all that. That's really cheap here. Same with the internet. Uh, also, electricity, water. It's all just so much cheaper than here in Europe. Uh, yeah, it just, just cannot compare. And, you know, I should also have a look at England because I used to live in uh, London twice. And the last time I lived there was in 2020, 2019 and 2020. So how is it different from the UK? Well, it is very different, a li different lifestyle. Um, it is less stressful to live in Vietnam or Da Nang specifically. It is less stressful. Also, as I said, I had a better social life in Vietnam. I'm, it, I made some really meaningful connections with people. And generally, things, things went quite all right. Whereas in England, um, it kind of went from bad to worse in the end for me, especially because of those places I lived in and the fact that I was getting sick. Yeah, so... I would say the best thing about London was the job. You know, the, the language school I worked for was amazing. Speak Up London, shout out to them. They are really great. They are doing an excellent job there. Um, it was a pleasure to work there. But apart from that, to be honest, it's just better to be in Vietnam. You know, I have to say, I, I, I never thought in a million years that this is something I would say before before I went to Vietnam. I had no idea what to expect, to be honest with you. It was it was a bit of a step in the unknown. It was a I was taking a leap of faith, you know? Sometimes you have to do this in life because how how do you know? You know, you have to just take risks. Yeah. If you ever thinking about something like that, doing about doing something like that, don't think about it twice. Just do it. It is worth it. What could possibly go wrong, right? I mean, any experience is 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 good. Yeah. So what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And yeah, I was far from getting killed there, I have to say. It felt like a really safe place, apart from the roads maybe. But yeah, it felt like a really, really nice place to live, you know. And um, in in London, if you run out of money, you're kind of screwed. In Vietnam, it's much harder to run out of money in the first place because things are, as I said, so much cheaper. But there are some opportunities for you as someone who can speak, especially if you can speak English. You can be an English teacher there. They, they do love 
hiring European English teachers, you know, especially Europeans, but not only Europeans, but mainly Europeans and Americans, I would say, and Australians or anyone who is a native speaker. Obviously, you have a slight advantage, but if you have, if you are qualified like me, uh, you can always make it work. You know, you just have to stand up for yourself and they will give you a chance there, like my language school did, which I'm grateful for. And I think I prove, I prove, I proved myself to them, right? Like I always do. And that's what it is all about, isn't it? You just need to be given the chance. And so you can make some money. That's, that's possible as well. Um, yeah, so nevertheless, I decided to go back, of course, and I flew back. Yeah, believe it or not, I did not decide to go on foot or ride a bicycle or even take a bus because it's just bloody too too long to do that. It's just too far away. It would be too long for me to travel by any other means than a plane. I had to travel by air. Honestly, it was the only option, okay? And uh, yeah, it was all right, to be honest. It was my second ever long haul flight, of course, because the first one was what a surprise when I arrived, when I when I went to Vietnam, right? When I arrived um, in Da Nang. My, now it was my second time, a long haul flight and a flight that takes hours. Yeah, it's a day or more. And this one took a long time because I made a mess of it. You know, I overthought it and I it, it, it turned out to be more expensive than it was supposed to. Um, because I, have, I was trying to make things easier for myself and ended up making it diff more difficult, as it often happens to people in life, yeah, is the Murphy's Law. Basically, I had three stopovers, yeah, so which means I had in total four connecting flights. Can you believe it? Unbelievable. And uh, the first one was I had to fly from Da Nang to, to Bangkok. And that, that is the simplest flight. It, actually, the second simplest. But that was just a short one. It's over an hour, I don't know, one and a half hours. And uh, the, the, the hardest thing about this one was that I actually had to stay in Bangkok overnight. When I say overnight, I mean I arrived uh, at the airport at 8. Then I had to switch to the other airport, so I had to take the shuttle bus because there are two airports in Bangkok. But that wasn't an issue. And then I had about 12 hours to stay at the airports, which is quite long, to be honest. Fortunately, it was the Premier League final uh, day, and I managed to find a bar, and that's where I watched the final game, the final games of the Premier League. That was a lot of fun. It wasn't really because Manchester City, bloody Manchester City, won the title again, and Arsenal couldn't make it in the end. But to be fair, everyone thought that would happen so i wasn't surprised i still enjoyed that i enjoyed watching football uh drinking beer at the airport it was fun and so then i somehow stayed up even though i was getting tired but i actually got so tired that when when it was time to to board that plane to oman because that was my next one it was, i was flying with oman airways um muscart mus muscart 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 i think is the city to which i flew and uh i was so tired that i actually slept on the on the plane quite well also what i recommend is taking uh, motion sickness pills it does do the trick honestly it makes it it does wonders um it works really well you you end up sleeping and i, I slept through the journey pretty much the entire journey i only woke up when it was time to to eat right because uh, a meal was included in in price of the ticket and in Mus muscat in oman basically uh, i had to i had another connecting flight to minik in germany that one was even longer so the one from bangkok to oman took 5 hours the one from oman to minik 7 hours yeah and the only issue, again, I managed to sleep quite well. The only issue is what there was, there was like a child 
who kept screaming and shouting and just misbehaving. It was unbearable. Everyone was turning their heads. I think this child was also a little bit like mentally ill or something, mentally challenged because it didn't make any sense that at that age, that child would scream so much. It seemed like a three-year-old, a three-year-old child or something. But anyway, it went well. And then in Munich, um, I was a little bit struggling to find my gate, but in the end I did. And then I just, it, actually from Munich to Prague, it's like 40, 40 minutes or something. That was the, the easiest, the simplest flight, the smoothest. Yeah, so uh, the flight was all right, you know, and um, there, there was I in Prague, in the Czech Republic after one and a half years, you know, and I have to tell you, it just, it's just such a weird feeling, you know, when you, when you get back, you feel like Alice in Wonderland. And uh, yeah, I think, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to split this podcast. This will be the first part of the podcast. And in the next one, in part two, I will tell you about how it actually felt to be back. I've been back for about a week now. And um, yeah, in the second part of the podcast, I will tell you about what it was like, how it felt to be back. Yeah and also what my possible next moves will be. All right, well, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if uh, this is your first time listening, then check out my website, teachersdenek.com. And um, yeah, have a nice day, everyone. Take care, and thank you for listening and watching. And please give this video a like if you are watching. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.